Bonjour, bonsoir, je suis Linko, aujourd'hui on se retrouve pour le live de Techland euh, pour les news sur Dying Light 2, donc c'est l'épisode euh, 2 de leur euh, série de live qui va s'appeler euh, Dying to Know, euh, et donc on est parti, 3, 2, 1, let's go. Okay. Hello and welcome to the second episode of Dying to Know. If you missed the first episode, you can still catch it on YouTube where you'll learn more about the game, about the release date, and catch the latest gameplay trailer. Today, we're going to be talking about the infected in Dying Light 2 with some of the people who helped create them. But right now, I'm sure you're wondering, where is Jonah? Well, Jonah is hard at work right now in LA recording some of the voices for Dying Light 2, so we'll forgive him for his absence. But he has left a message for you. Hey guys, uh, good news. I'm in LA and we're finishing up voice recordings for Aiden in Dying Light 2. And uh, this particular quest we're working on right now showcases a lot of the disgusting, horrific, freaks of nature that you're gonna fight in the game itself. Um, the better news is that the episode today of Dying to Know focuses almost entirely on those monsters and cool. Leia is gonna tell you all about Ça va them. De, de zombies, etc. The bad news cool. is I'm not gonna be there in the studio, at least this time. I'm gonna be in this studio recording lines for a while. <laughs> But uh, Leia is gonna take good care of you. Uh, we're gonna make sure that Donc, you get everything you need to know and I, 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 think, I, I think I gotta go back to work. Il est en train de terminer les voix. Good night. Good luck and remember to stay sorte. human. Let's go. Thanks, Jonah. Well, we might not be in sunny LA right now, but we do have something just as exciting to talk about. The monsters. We're going to be looking at how they're created. We're going to be venturing into the night in a new gameplay trailer. We're going to be seeing what's new on Techland GG and more. Okay. Allez, c'est parti. But first, let's take a moment to thank our amazing community. You. We love seeing you react to our content and your comments help motivate the entire team. So, thank you. Over 750,000 of you tuned in to the first Dying to Know live stream. Over 10 ah ouais, ça a bien million marché, of you have watched the first gameplay reveal trailer and over 17 million comments have been left across our social media channels on all platforms. It's amazing. Thank you. There is literally nobody we would rather explore the darkness alongside than you. guest today is Timon Smektawa, the lead game designer for Dying Light 2. Stay human. Okay, c'est le lead game designer. Hello, Timon. Hi, hello. Hello, welcome to the show. Um, so, ouais. we're talking about monsters today. And where do monsters start? They start in the imagination of the game designers like yourself and the others. So, what can you tell us about them? So, first of all, I think it's important to say that our monsters used to be sick and suffering people who just didn't manage to find UV light or any other cure in time. The virus causes them a lot of pain and it makes them suffer. And they are not driven by hatred, but by instinct, their new nature. Right, okay, so what does that process look like for turning from a human to a monster? So at first, you get symptoms similar to fever. And at this stage, the process can still be slowed down or even paused. But if you spend okay, too much time in darkness, en, en zombie, hein? the sickness progresses and your symptoms well, become more un... severe. And eventually, Stage 4, on devient viral, un volatile, et après il y a des infectés un peu spéciaux. Ok. Et donc il y aura moins de monstres la journée, mais il y en aura. Ok, donc dans les bâtiments c'est la merde après. 
a day as they are swarming with the infected. Right, okay. So, I mean, you know, if I fancy going in during the day for some reason, is there any chance? Uh, no, no, absolutely oh. no. So, uh, because <laughs> if you do it during the day, it's a certain death. Right. Okay. But you can Donc tu vas pas dans les nids la journée, parce qu'ils sont sous là-dedans. So now you can go to the entire dark zone completely unnoticed. Ah, okay. as as On peut être discret même par rapport aux zombies. Right, okay. like Il y avait déjà un peu ça dans le premier jeu. Et là apparemment c'est pas mal. Well, yes, everyone is unique. And uh, for example, the Revenant, uh, who is my personal okay. favorite, uh, he has those things coming from his back almost like wings. Mm. Uh, he's very scary, very dangerous. Il serait dangereux, lui, okay. Smart and intelligent. Ah, and lui, il est intelligent comme son okay. his nature, we have kept his appearance more human. I think smart and intelligent are two of my least favorite things when encountering an enemy. That sounds that scary. <laughs> wow. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us today, Timo. Okay. Thank you for having me. Ça, c'était un des zombies un peu spéciaux. Oh, let's go. So, you have an army here? Oh, the peacekeepers. Seriously riling up the bazaar folks. I'll proceed with caution. Here we going? You uh, wanted to show me something? Sure. Follow me. You won't get far without a biomarker. Without it, you don't know when you turn. <coughs>
Yeah, that's great. Sorry about this. What? Wait, sorry about what? <laughs> about that. On behalf of all its whores, bandits, and idiots, I christen you a citizen of Villador. <laughs> You're about to turn. Get into the light fast. <laughs> Il y a beaucoup de zombies différents et tout. Ouais, le, le jeu a l'air magnifique déjà. Le parcours a l'air incroyable. Oh, ça a l'air fou. Ça a l'air fou. And his blisters. They shine okay, the militia are similar to that. And that's because we wanted our monsters to be like really visible and recognizable in the darkness. Yeah, for sure. And um, you kind of must have had a good start in the hospital. I think it's an hospital. Yeah, we need to build a lot of pro-heavy objects mm. uh, or charge. And our goal was to make his silhouette really monumental and aggressive. Okay. Just. Il y aura un peu les mêmes mouvements que le premier jeu, ça c'est cool. Okay, so the demolisher is probably one of the bigger monsters in the game. Um, have you got an example of like the smaller monsters, maybe? Yes, of course. For example, we have Banshee. She's insane, Banshee, fast, okay. and agile. Because of that, she needs to be, of course, smaller oh, than the demolisher, really and she doesn't have like the hard and tissue that we saw on him. But I wouldn't mess with her. Yeah, we really wanted her femininity to show. So she's wearing a dress, though it's pretty ragged now, and also she's wearing a jewelry. That fused into her body while she was turning, and her hands grew larger than the rest of her body. Almost same like in Demolishers, but here the disproportion is much bigger. Wow, yeah, and no, I feel like there's a story behind that. It was like, the jewelry fused into the body? That's so intense. Uh, but why are her hands so big? Basically, they are her weapons. So, yeah, because she strikes uh, from above, uh, her fingers grow longer and also sharper. À quoi Ah ok, elle est rapide, elle est agile. Elle peut sauter et <rire> bâtiment quoi Elle va être horrible. C'est cool. Ils ont fait plein de zombies différents et tout. Ça, ça va être pas mal. Hein. Ça va diversifier beaucoup le jeu. Très bonne chose. When it gets dark at night and the monsters leave their lairs and roam the city streets, the residents of the city like to gather in their safe spots under the UV lamps for protection and wait out until the dawn. And when they're doing that, they like to kill time by telling stories themselves about Banshee, for example. If you're wondering why she's wearing that beautiful necklace and ball gown, well, now you can find out. This is Ok, ça montrait un peu l'histoire de la Banshee. 
pas tout compris. Hein. C'est cool. Ah. Ils vont faire une BD un peu, ok. Cool. C'est gratuit en ligne si vous la voulez. Ah, pardon, quand elle sortira. N'hésitez so pas, c'est en description le, le lien pour euh, techlandgg.com like pour plus d'infos. Luckily, we have the one person who can answer that question here with us today. It's Dying Light 2's animation director, David Lubrica, and he's here to tell us more. Okay, donc là on s'oriente vers l'animation. Des monstres. Uh, welcome, David. Hello, welcome. Hello. Uh, so you work with the animation team in taking all that concept art and bringing it to life and having like an actual living, breathing monster in the game. So where do you even start with that? So the process starts with creating a prototype uh, and then designing choreography based on this. Uh, Then we take it to the mock-up shoot, and that's where we have our actors ah, the movement, and we actually learn from them also. That gives us some extra ideas. Uh, but the real magic happens uh, when we take all the things we captured and start putting in into the engine and into the game's language. Okay, can you give us a, an example of that in game? Sure, uh, like uh, volatile, for example. So he sniffs around, he uh, searches for his prey. He has those cut-like jumps. But many of those movements are actually characteristics of uh, the creatures we know from animal documentaries. And he combines them with uh, some new ones and unique ones, and that's what makes him who he actually is. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm going to be like in game. I'm going to be searching him out and trying to see all these little details you've made, which is probably not the best idea because I think that will get me killed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, with him, it's not the best idea. Uh, but we have other infected, and uh, all of them actually have very, very distinctive and interesting behavior. Super okay, cool. So Ils ont fait énormément d'animations du coup. Pour chaque sure, uh, so chaque zombie, etc. Howler, for example. Uh, he doesn't fight. Uh, he's more of an alarm, like this. Uh, ah, c'est un zombie qui sert d'alarme. Searching for prey. Cool. Um, he uh, screams to call cool. other infected when silent, he spots human, but uh, also he sometimes rises on his tiptoes uh, to see better, to see his surroundings. Uh, but that also makes him uh, look like this very scared, you know, panic child. Why is he so okay, scared? il ressemblera well, un peu aux esquiveurs du coup, lui. Mais il va alerter les autres zombies. Um, he, he really wants to scream, but the virus has attacked his uh, lungs and, and vocal cords, and that would just hurt him too much. Uh, he's helpless. But they all just lose this fight with their instincts then at some point. Totally. Um, actually, they... Uh, rather evoke pity. Uh, they, they, you can see that they can notice the deformations uh, the virus has done to their bodies. Uh, they can touch them, they can uh, experience something like seizures, uh, and you can see that all this aggression, all this rage is repressed in them. Um, and, uh, you know, something might trigger it, and that's usually an opponent, and you can see that all this energy uh, is released and uh, transferred on the opponent, on the player, for example, us. I can't wait to see that in game. Um, but I want to talk about Banshee, because we mentioned her earlier. Um, we've seen how she looks, but like, how is she animated? She's, uh, she's a curious one. She, uh, she has those really long, deformed fingers, uh, and she uh, uses them to fight, but kind of like a byproduct. And we had to imagine oh, well, how she would feel about them. And we thought that they must really bother her, right? Yeah. Uh, she can get really clumsy with them. She falls on them in this very uncontrolled way, wow. uh, as if she was forgetting she had them. So it's a bit of a curse and an asset for her then. She's like conflicted. Totally. She's uh, really conflicted. You can actually see her sometimes actively hunting you. Uh, and then at some point, if she gets too close to you during combat, she'll uh, just suddenly jump back and cower. Okay. As if she was trying ah, to oui. resist the virus, uh, but Elle ultimately très, très, she uh, would just give okay. its power. Uh, wow, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much, David. Thanks for having me. If you've ever wondered which of the infected in the world of Dying Light you might be, then I've got good news. You can check out a quiz at dyinglightgame.com forward slash which monster and find out whether you'd be, I don't know, a violent okay. volatile, yeah, a tough demolisher or... Maybe 
Pour savoir ce qu'on serait nous, je crois. Ouais, ils ont ajouté des trucs sur Dying Light, du coup. Ok, vous allez sur le site, si vous avez le jeu, vous aurez peut-être euh, cette arme, dans le jeu, le premier jeu. Super cool Well, since Dying to Know is about the world of Dying Light 2, there's still something else we need to hear about. If you pardon the pun, because we're going to be talking about the sound design of Dying Light 2. If you've ever wondered about where the roaring, ah, cool. the, blaring, the sound design. screaming that covers the streets of the city Pour Dying Light 2. comes from, then you're in the right place. C'est-à-dire les sons, etc. Comment ils ont été produits. Okay, donc on va voir les sound designers. Senior sound designer Tomek Shedak is here with us today. Hello. Hey, nice to meet you. You too, hello. Um, so, first question. Do the monsters have their own language? They technically are not heard uh, creatures, so uh, they didn't develop sounds to communicate with each other. Although, there are some exceptions. For example, Howler, when attacked, he would uh, scream to alert other, in other infected, and then you can get yourself into really big troubles very, very, very soon. Let's talk about the process of actually creating those sounds, though. Um, so you have to imagine what a volatile might sound like from scratch, and where do you even start with that? Well, you know, the virus the deformed the infected in very different ways, and you have to reflect it in their, uh, in their voices. So, for example, uh, the acid-spitting monster, you mm -hmm. know, has to have sound with some kind of acidic uh, yeah. characteristics, some, uh, some watery heat uh, ouais. stuff in it. Comment ils font pour trouver tous les sons différents des monstres Ah cool, on va voir comment ils font. De se faire vraiment mal à la gorge des fois. Ça rend super bien quoi. Après c'est un peu modifié aussi sur, euh, sur les ordi après. Hein. Super intéressant en vrai. Oui il commence forcément avec une, une voix humaine vu que les, les zombies sont humains donc de base. Et après il modifie. Because you have to know, I mean, the player has to know if the infected is uh, is in pain or is super aggressive or is maybe dying. Ok, ils font des variations de voix pour savoir si les zombies, euh, very, very par exemple, s'ils sont énervés, euh, so sont agressifs, s'ils sont en train de souffrir, s'ils ils ont peur. Super cool. That's a lot to try and communicate in <laughs> sounds. <laughs> um, so that's the monsters, but what about the entire city? Our city is dying. So we had to find these abandoned places where there is no sound of the civilization. We visited abandoned factories, we visited post-military bunkers. We went to the forest okay. at minus 15 degrees because it sounds completely different than in the summer. And we climbed up the mountains. It was a lot of uh, interesting places. Oh, ouais, ils se déplacent beaucoup pour faire les sons en fait. Ok. And, you know, at night, with the good headphones, you can definitely enjoy it. I cannot wait oh, to hear cool. it. It sounds like you've got a fascinating... Ils ont vraiment fait des efforts de <laughs> ouf sur le... Thank you so much for coming in today. Sur le son qu'il y aura dans les endroits... Comment dire Genre dans la ville et tout, genre. Ça va être cool. Ça va être super cool ça. Déjà le 1 c'était pas mal hein. 
become a part of that amazing universe. Remember the UGC contest? It's already started, so just show us your art to be in with a chance of winning a copy of the already sold out collector's edition and join the world of Dying Light 2. Just look at all the amazing things people have already created. Dying Light 2 releases later this year on December the 7th and you can see it right now. But if you want to dive into the universe immediately, then why don't you check out Techland GG for more news, updates, and to grab your free copy of the Banshee comic. All right, I think we know everything about monsters now, except for one thing, how to defeat them. So stay tuned for the next episode. We'll be ah, ils vont nous parler dans le prochain épisode des armes, euh, comment se battre contre les zombies et comment les tuer. Super cool. Donc là, on revient sur l'animation. Oh, les animations vont être pas mal, je pense. Hein. Déjà, le 1, c'était bien fait aussi. Hein. Ah, mais attendez, mais c'est le même que dans le premier qui fait les animations, non Mais je crois que c'est le créateur du parcours, d'ailleurs. Je me souviens plus de son nom exactement. C'est un français, d'ailleurs. Voilà. De David, David Bell, Bell. <rire> Donc c'est pas. Attends, est-ce que c'est est David Bell ou pas J'ai pas fait attention, je me sens pas si c'était lui ou pas. Mais David Bell est le créateur du parcours. Donc c'est cool. Let's go. Donc vous pouvez déjà euh, précommander le jeu. Et ils sortent le 7 décembre 2021. Voilà, le site euh, de DyingLightGG.com euh, sera euh, en description, bien sûr. Donc voilà, merci beaucoup d'avoir regardé cette vidéo jusqu'à la fin. N'hésitez pas à liker, commenter, partager. Et, et surtout, n'oubliez pas que vous êtes unique, votre histoire est unique. Allez, salut tout le monde